So Perseverance itself is the name of the rover. And this mission, um, what Perseverance has done is actually travelled uh, a little bit further into this place called the Crater Floor Fractured Rough. What a name for a place, hey? Mm -hmm. um, and what's really interesting about this place um, is that it's actually an ancient lake bed and it's thought to have some of the oldest geological um, sort of uh, rocks, I suppose, formations in the area and contain something called perchlorates. And anybody that knows their chemistry uh, would know it's chlorine with four oxygens. So it's ClO4 minus. Um, and now what's interesting about perchlorates, which are basically salts, uh, which you might find in like sort of evaporated regions on Earth, um, you can actually have perchlorate reducing bacteria we find in um, in, on Earth, I suppose, and we're looking for those in on in this uh, sort of ancient riverbed in Mars. But uh, Perseverance itself will not be returning these samples. These samples are actually being cached and they will be collected at a later date and returned to Earth. OK, thanks for clarifying that for us. It just seems to be so competitive in this space race with China taking great strides, particularly in the past year. China has been an amazing story. I mean, honestly, in the last in the last 18 months, China has landed a lander and a rover on the far side of the moon. They've returned moon rocks to Earth, which is the first since the 1970s and Apollo. Uh, it successfully landed a rover on, the, on Mars on the first attempt with basically no other um, attempt to get to Mars. And it's also started building um, Tiangong, the space station, uh, with several modules already launched and installed. And there's three Chinese astronauts there at the moment. I mean, it's absolutely incredible uh, the rate uh, of this, I suppose, of China's entry into this uh, second space race, I suppose. And it's not slowing down anytime soon. What else can we expect from China in the coming years? Oh, well, I mean, they, they say they want to be a leading space power by 2045. Uh, and given that basically they started this whole Mars thing in 2006, and, you know, that's that's less than 20 years ago um, and they're already at Mars, I, I kind of believe that they will get there. I mean, they're going to finish Tiangong, which is the space station that's going around the Earth. Um, and they've got the laboratory cabin and the Mengchan um, laboratory cabin going up next year. So in May and August, look for that. And there's a space telescope module. So there's some science going in there as well. Uh, in the coming decades, you're looking at uh, well, China plans to send crewed and uncrewed missions to Mars. Um, so sort of the sort of early 2030s uh, and, and 2040s, 50s respectively with uh, uncrewed and crewed. Uh, they want to establish a manned lunar base. Uh, and then beyond that, they want to explore asteroids, comets, Jupiter, other solar system objects, um, they're really basically not limiting themselves. Um, they're not only looking to explore and to expla expand where, I suppose, humankind are going, uh, but they also are looking to develop space for, for industrial uses. So there is actually talk of a plan to uh, harness solar energy uh, from a satellite uh, in geostationary, so in the same position as the Earth turns, basically, orbit around, around the Earth. Wow. So, uh, so much stuff in the next 30 years. <laughs> so watch this space where China is concerned. Uh, also, we've seen developments this week of certain billionaires taking a, a ride into space. What did you make of Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos's flights? Well, I, I did go on air and call it a willy waving contest, um, which on the surface it really is. It's basically, oh, my rocket's bigger and better than yours. Yours is just a plane. Mine's got bigger windows. You didn't go as high up as we did. Um, and that's certainly something you might take away from it. But um, it's really a first here, like 2021 marks the point that we see uh, individual people and companies getting into space on their own. Uh, and this is really a turning point because up until now, it's always been in partnership with nation states. So it's really quite, uh, I suppose, a boundary that's been crossed. I'm, I'm not certain whether it's a good one or a bad one. Uh, but look, if you look at the space race 50 years ago, uh, getting uh, men and women into orbit, um, certainly women from the USSR's perspective, yay, um, and also getting man on the moon. Um, that pushed ahead a whole bunch of technologies and advances in, in computations. Um, and now we're watching uh, pieces of microplastics in the ocean from space, um, sort of trying to fix our earlier problems, I suppose. So I guess, you know, if you look at it from a bigger perspective, uh, you might expect a, a lot of new technologies coming out of, of this um, uh, willy-waving contest. <laughs> 
I like how you phrase it. How might, what might this mean for space tourism in the near future? Well, for me personally, uh, I basically am not going to be able to afford it. <laughs> it's sort of a quarter of a million dollars at the moment. That um, makes two of honestly, us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. You might, you might win a raffle of some you kind. Never and know. I suppose when things become more common um, and, and when there's competition, it always does drive down prices. Uh, and also we look at new to technology, technologies become cheaper. Um, and it also certainly becomes, um, I suppose Bezos has said that he would like to get heavy industry off earth and into space. So there's certainly a drive, not just from space tourism, um, but from, from other, uh, I suppose, environmental potentially, or at least using the industry space, using space for industry. There's a lot of interest there in getting up there. So I think it will drive prices down, but I'm still not ready to buy a ticket in the next couple of decades. <laughs> Me neither. Not for a while. Well, we can't afford it for the moment anyway. Um, for those of us stuck at home during lockdowns, we can look to the skies for some entertainment this month. Claire, what can, what can you tell us? We're actually really lucky. I mean, the skies are free. You can just walk out there with your mask on. Um, Jupiter is currently chasing Saturn across the sky, which is a really lovely sight. So Jupiter, you'll see in the east, uh, rising at about 7.50 at night at the moment. Uh, Saturn's just a little bit higher, and for me, to the left. Um, Saturn will actually buddy up with the moon on the 25th, uh, when something we call a conjunction, and then Jupiter gets its uh, socially distant uh, cuddling of the moon the following night. Um, <laughs> But the great thing about July is the end of the month we we sort of uh, we are blessed with a bunch of meteor showers. So there are a couple of meteor showers that sort of give us four or five per hour. But definitely one to look out for is the Southern Delta Aquarius, um, which comes from the uh, the remnants of a comet, um, which has the great name of P two thousand and eight Y twelve Soho. Um, <laughs> but that'll be like twenty meteor meteors per hour. So about the thirtieth of uh, July, uh, get out there and have a look. Um, about sort of what west northwest horizon will look like where they're all coming from which is called the radiant and that's about 3 a.m but they'll be visible all night and and either side of that date they're around for a long time and they're definitely worth seeing and finally uh, if you're just wanting to sit at home with a, a glass of pinot in the warmth of your own home uh, there are a bunch of live stream events going on. So, for example, the Astronomical Society of Victoria is doing a live stream uh, on Saturday night. It starts at 8 p.m. Melbourne time. Uh, and actually, they've linked up with um, the Astronomical Society of South Australia and Perth Observatory and uh, special comments from yours truly. Um, we're basically going to bring the universe to people uh, from live telescopes, but in the comfort of their own home. Fantastic. Sounds perfect for the occasion. Claire Kenyon, always great to talk. Thank you so much. Thanks, Yvonne.